All right, before we start this video, let's just all take a minute to take a deep breath. Are we good? Everybody calm? Yes, you may have heard in the news and on social media that the Disney Das Pass is changing and it's actually happening pretty soon. Without any information at all, I know that just saying that gives everybody anxiety. Is my disability going to be approved? Is my trip going to be ruined? Am I even going to be able to afford getting the Genie Plus if I can't use the DAS Pass anymore? What makes so-and-so's disability or diagnosis more important or more severe than the other or more than mine? For reference, it is April 10th of 2024. Disney let everybody know yesterday that there are some changes on the website, so that's what we're going to talk about today. This is all we know. There are going to be more changes coming. I was originally going to wait to make this video until we have all of those answers, but after seeing the outrage and the, honestly, the nastiness that I've seen online so far, I feel like we need to just halt content production and just talk about what's really going on. Disney is ever-changing, as we all know. We're all still trying to get used to the whole Genie Plus system, the lightning lanes, and all that. But if you've been going to Disney for a while now, you'll notice a pattern. When Disney starts to unroll new processes and new regulations, there is just pandemonium, pure chaos. Everybody thinks it's the worst thing ever. You know, human nature is to get angry because people feel like they're going to lose something or something's going to be harder for them or it's going to be more expensive, which is an ongoing issue with Disney. But before we all get unhinged, let's just go over what Disney has said on their website. As I mentioned, today is April 10th, 2024. If you are going to Disney between now in May 19th of 2024, the DAS Pass program is going to function as current normal. So everything that you've been doing so far, you're going to continue doing that up through May 19th. Disney states that pre-arrival conversations via live chat will determine eligibility for DAS and that'll be available 2 to 30 days prior to your park visit. For now, you can still book up to two one-hour return windows for select experiences using DAS Advanced Planning. You can still have that in-person conversation with one of the cast members at the guest relation locations. Each park has one. Just ask one of the cast members whenever you scan into the park where they're located. Currently, DAS is valid for up to 30 days from the start of registration. Once that service has elapsed, guests must re-register, or when a new ticket is required, whichever is shorter. Now, the changes that we've seen on the website indicate that effective May 20th, 2024, the in-person registration will no longer be available at Disney World. Going forward, you'll have to get on the computer and do a live chat with a cast member to find out if you're eligible. Just like before, you can do this between two and 30 days out from your trip, but you can do same day registration as well, but you will still have to use that live chat feature. Registering online is gonna be new for us too. If you guys have watched some of our other DAS Pass videos, you'll know that my husband and Tim does currently qualify for a DAS Pass. We've always just done this in person at the park. We really don't care about the advanced planning and the two pre-selects or anything like that. We just go, we have that face-to-face -face conversation with a cast member, and it's always been pretty simple for us. So for our next trip, we are going to have to go through this process just like you guys, and we will be documenting it to show you what that looks like. I won't be sharing the conversation that Tim has with the cast member because that is private information, and I don't want to be promoting ways to work around this system because this is the overall issue with the DAS Pass program right now. Disney is seeing a huge increase in users, and it's not effective anymore. Disney's actually shared that they've seen DAS Pass usage triple in the last five years. That's a lot. And if you guys have been to Disney recently, you've probably noticed that. There are a lot more DAS Pass users than there used to be. One of the downsides to social media is that people will share information that gives other people ways to work around the system so that they can get a free pass. And sadly, that just makes it harder for the people who really need it. One of the other things that we're gonna see changing is the max party size. How many people in your group can fall under that DAS Pass? Currently, I think it's six people that can fall under the DAS Pass. 
but effective May 20th, that's going to change to four people. So it's going to be the DAS pass holder plus three. And the point of sharing all this isn't necessarily to make you guys worry. If you have a family that is more than four people, don't automatically assume that they're not going to let your other two kids go with you. We're going to have to wait and see what Disney says about this specifically. But at this point, I can tell you what the website says, and that's four people total. Now currently the DAS pass is valid for 30 days, or when you have to get a new ticket, whichever is shorter. Disney's actually changing that, so the new DAS Pass will be valid for 120 days, or again, if you need a new ticket, you'll have to re-register. Now, if you guys are going to Disneyland out in California, you have a little bit longer to wait for these changes to roll out. For Disneyland, these aren't going to go into effect until June 18th of 2024. Now, one of the biggest concerns that I've seen so far online is whether or not your disability or your diagnosis is going to qualify after May 20th. There is some wording on Disney's website that has people a little bit worried. Disney said on their website in quotes that DAS supports guests who due to a developmental disability like autism or similar are unable to wait in a conventional queue for an extended period of time. I think Disney is reaping the effects of that wording today as we speak because people will read one disability. They'll read autism and they're going to assume that anybody else that has any other issues, anxiety, cancer, claustrophobia, PTSD, there's so many different disabilities, none of us know them all. But because Disney specifically calls out autism, people are losing their minds thinking that they're not going to be qualified anymore. I've seen people talk about how their trip is going to be ruined if they can't get a DAS pass. I've even seen people comparing their disabilities to autism, saying that their situation is worse. Terrible things, okay? Let's all remember that everybody fights their own battles. It is not fair to compare one disability to another. The truth is, is that we have no idea what another family experiences with their disability. And to say that you have a worse off situation than somebody else is very close-minded. If we're being real about this, the bottom line is that people are abusing the system at Disney. What is the point of a program that helps those with disabilities if the program isn't effective anymore? The whole idea is to use this program so that people with disabilities like autism or PTSD can wait outside of the queue. This is is not about time. This is not about how long you have to wait. It's about the space that you're waiting in. If you have a wheelchair, you can wait in that line. And I hate to sound harsh when I say that, but you've got to try to think about the reasons that Disney offers this service. This service is not something that we're entitled to. This is something that they provide. Disney gives access to everybody that wants to come and enjoy their theme parks, right? Again, as of right now, Disney has not come out and said that all of these other disabilities will no longer qualify. They have not said that anywhere. Cast members are still currently being trained on how to handle this situation, so they may not all have the answers yet. This is going to be a rolling change that we're all going to have to adapt to, and if you guys are subscribers on our channel, you're probably in the military, so you should already know how to adapt and overcome. I wanted to make this video to let you guys know that these things are changing, but I don't want to make you worry yet. If you think not having a DAS Pass is going to ruin your vacation, I highly encourage you to look into Genie Plus. Yes, it will cost extra money, unfortunately. However, it will work similarly to a DAS Pass. It doesn't have to ruin your vacation. There's one more point that I want to bring up, and this has to do with the way that Universal Studios handles their disability access. They use a third party. So basically, from what I understand, you would go to the doctor, get a diagnosis, or get some kind of a, I guess, a script or something that, that will say what you have, what you struggle with. And then you're going to turn that into the third party system, and then Universal allows you to have this pass. I've seen a lot of pros and cons, a lot of people that love it, a lot of people that hate it, but overall I think it's working for them from what I've heard. If you disagree with me, please let me know. I haven't been to use this, I don't know. But from my perspective, I'm leaning towards welcoming that process at Disney. I truly feel like a lot of people that need these DAS passes would freely offer any kind of proof that they had so that they could make their time at the theme park easier. Maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen an argument to convince me otherwise yet. If you guys are completely against that, 
let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it because what is Disney gonna do to make it better? If they have this system in place that's supposed to help people and it's no longer helping people, what are the options? What should Disney do right now? Of course, the best thing to do is to email Disney with your concerns and your questions and hopefully they'll get back to you soon. But I'm open to different perspectives. If you guys have any ideas, if you guys think that this is absurd, let me know. But that's all the information that I have today. Again, I'm going to keep you guys updated. If Disney comes out with more information in the next few days or weeks, I will be making another video to clarify all of those points for you. At that point, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description of this one. So if you're not sure if anything has come out yet, just be sure to go into the description after you watch this video and see if I've posted anything. Or you could just go on the channel homepage and subscribe because then you'll get notifications whenever we make a new video. If you're a service member or a spouse or a family member of either of those, feel free to join our community. We have a lot of videos about Shades of Green, Holly Koa, Edelweiss. We haven't been to Dragon Hill Lodge yet, but our goal is to cover all of the AFRC resorts and give you guys all of the information we have to make your vacations easier. And all of them are Disney adjacent because we're Disney people just like you. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't be discouraged. Let's wait and see what Disney has to say. But we'll be with you the whole way to make this easier and more enjoyable. We'll see you on the next video. But until then, don't forget to be happy, not just strong.